Neanderthals and humans were different in the ways they lived. And most remarkably, in the ways they died. The burial of La Ferrassi shows the body of a male Neanderthal lying on one side in a pit, and that's all. And so far, we have very few evidence of uh, Neanderthal burials with any kind of, of complex uh, construction or organization. Neanderthals do not display many signs of symbolic life. In fact, we don't know any kind of uh, uh, art or symbols or pictures used by Neanderthals. In contrast, modern humans appear to have treated their dead with extreme care. In the permafrost of Russia, this man was found buried in clothing embroidered with thousands of delicately wrought beads. Does this suggest that modern humans considered life more precious? Could it be that even though human brains were about the same size as Neanderthals, they had dramatically different abilities? The evidence is controversial. So scientists like John Shea of the State University of New York are reenacting the activities of both species to understand how their minds might have differed. The Neanderthal point's big and heavy, and the nature of its heavy handle means that it could not have been thrown very far. In fact, it was probably not thrown at all. It was probably a stabbing weapon, used more or less like a modern bayonet. That means that in order to kill an animal, the Neanderthals had to get up really close and stab this thing into a big, dangerous creature, putting their lives at risk. And if a Neanderthal spear ever was thrown, its range was limited. 19, 20, 21, 22. Three, 23 meters thrown with an Neanderthal-type wooden spear. The modern human weapon, on the other hand, this piece of, of uh, antler here, is very narrow, cone-shaped like a bullet. It's attached to a very narrow handle. And this suggests it was probably thrown from a great distance. Making the antler point takes hours and hours and hours. You have to soak the antler until it's just right and then carve it by abrading it against a piece of sandstone something more or less like this you know it takes a tremendous amount of patience to impose will to impose design on this antler it takes no great amount of, of uh, time to impose one's will on stone stones are very very easy material to shape the Neanderthal point could have been made in a matter of minutes it's very very simple when you know how to chip stone correct way quick and dirty is the name of the game for Neanderthal technology the next thing you want to do See this ridge here, the way the ridge that sticks up? Hold this up like I showed you, and then with your hammer stone, hit right there, taunt, and you'll undercut this whole mass and flatten the thing out. What I'm doing in so teaching stone there. technology here is I'm trying to recreate the evolutionary environment. This is probably the way modern humans transfer these skills, is an older individual sitting around with younger individuals, you can share information. Neanderthals, we don't have any evidence of systematic teaching. It's probably something they reinvented the wheel a lot. Beyond 50,000 years back in earlier antiquity, it's the same thing over and over and over again. That tells you there's not a lot of information being transferred, probably just imitation. But after 50,000, when the modern humans show up on the scene, every generation there's something new. Not simply to duplicate old technology, but to build on the experience, knowledge, and wisdom of elders. This, for modern humans, was a vital strategic advantage. Now, technology could improve from one generation to the next. With this new invention, the spear thrower, a weapon could be launched even greater distances, reducing the hunter's risk. The Neanderthals, 24 meters. Forty-two meters, advantage, modern humans. Improved technology suggests a great deal about a human's emerging ability to transmit information over great distances across time. These pictures are a way to communicate with someone else without this person being here. It can be at a far distance or it can be uh, in a far future. 
And this is what apparently Neanderthals did not do. Fossils tell us Neanderthals lived in small, often isolated pockets, largely cut off from other Neanderthals. For some reasons, when they could not survive longer in this spot, they would just move away. The picture we have of the upper Paleolithic modern humans in Europe is, is quite different. For modern humans, portable art may have served as a means of communication, some of it traveling hundreds of miles from where it had been created. It's very clear that these people were involved in net of exchanges at long distance. They belong to a big entity, a big cultural entity, and it's very likely that Neanderthals did not have this at all. Perhaps the most compelling evidence of early culture is concealed deep beneath the earth. While we may not know exactly why humans painted in these caves, we now can guess how they painted. Archaeologist Michel Lomblochet has studied the techniques of cave art. He thinks some of the images were rendered by a process he calls spit painting. Spit painting must have had very important symbolic significance. Through experimentation, he has been able to reproduce the technique of early artists. By mixing pigment with saliva, he believes they achieved a bonding compound that lasted long after the creators were gone. It's not at all like painting on canvas. It's quite different. The cave is uh, full of shape, natural shapes. The cave is extremely, uh, it's exceptional, uh, it's beautiful. And what might renderings of wild goats and sheep painted in these eerie caverns tell us of the mine's Big Bang? It is the first uh, manifestation of uh, human imagination. Modern men tend to, to make their imprint on the landscape, on the territory. So it's why they penetrated in the deepest part of the earth. It's like to express themselves, to say that we are the owner of the earth in some way and we have some relationship, personal relationship, with the spirit living inside the earth. In other corners of these caves, Lord Blanchet has found artifacts made of bone and a pattern of wear on the rock that led him to speculate these cave explorers also made music. I have the feeling to be in a cathedral here, a big cathedral, an important cathedral. So, below and above ground, our ancestors were refining technology and art, and communicating in complex ways. It appears as if these changes occurred rapidly. How could it have happened? My own view is that there was a brain change. That there was a genetic change that promoted the fully modern human brain that allowed the, the kind of innovation and, and invention, the ability to innovate and invent, that is a characteristic of modern humans. If you accept the idea that there was a neurological change 50,000 years ago and that this was rooted in biology, it would just become the latest, the most recent in a long series of mutations on which natural selection operated to produce the human species as we understand it today.